Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. Today we're going to take a look at making a quick modification uh, to the gamepad for the Pi 2 Girl project. So last week I released the Pi 2 Girl project and uh, I've had a little bit of time to play around with the D-pad and the controls and things. So if you take a look at this D-pad, it's actually really simple and flat. And after a couple hours of playing, it, it doesn't feel that great, <laughs> especially with because it's so flat. So I, I figure we can do a little bit better in terms of ergonomics to make this design a little bit better. So this is what we're gonna make today. We're gonna make these little angled uh, raised buttons uh, so that we can have better feeling when we're playing the game. So I actually have here is the Super Nintendo controller D-pad, the original D-pad. And actually, if you take a look at it from the side, it has a little bit of contour, a lot like the, what we did here. So uh, in, in this tutorial, it's really a lesson on how to use this feature. It's called the draft feature under modify. And basically it lets you select a surface and then select a plane or another surface to make a, an angle. So you can add a custom angle to make this draft. So um, we're gonna take a look at that. It's a little bit of a, of a lesson because um, you can't just apply it to a surface with a bunch of geometry and expect all of them to be like this. So you have to kind of think a little bit smarter about it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, let me go ahead and make a new design because we're gonna start from scratch. Let me close that window. Or just leave it open and just move it that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna click on the top here and I'll start off with a circle. So I'm going to click on the top grid here and then just draw out in the center. Always want to start in the center, right? So I'm going to uh, type in uh, 28.3. I'm not sure if that's the right number, but I'll make sure to hit enter or tab to make sure it's locked so I can get a sketch dimension. Let me look at my notes. I had some notes here. Let me open it up. There's my notes. So it's 26 or 28.6 actually, because I already measured this. I want it to be exact like this. Super Nintendo thing, so that's why I'm using those measurements instead of the measurements from the Pi Girl. But you can make them whatever you want. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a. Let me click. Let me close that uh, window there so I get all my tools. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and I'm going to switch to the center re re rectangle, so that I can uh, click on the center here. When you click on the center, and you can draw out a rectangle from the center. So it's uh, 8.5 I think by 23. And I'll make sure to hit enter or tab between them so I can lock it in there. So I get my sketch dimensions and I'll type in the right thing. So it is 23 by 8.5. And I'll just move these guys out like so, so they're out of my way. And I'll even move this one over here. You just drag them, click and drag if you want to move your dimensions out of the way. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make, uh, instead of making another rectangle and having to punch in the thing, I could just uh, copy and paste it. So I'm going to select the four lines that make up the rectangle. And my, and my keyboard, I'm going to hit Command C and Command V, and that'll paste it. But if I start rotating it, you see the it's not rotating where I want. So I need to have it um, need to have it where it is in the center. The 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 pivot thing is centered. Let me hit zero. Tab away from that. Zero. It's actually not doing it. Isn't that interesting? Got a bug here, guys. So what I'm going to do is hit cancel and then just select those again and then copy and paste it. But this time, instead of moving the manipulator, I'm actually going to go to set pivot first and then click on the center here and then click OK, done. And now I can move the rotate handle and then rotate it where I want. So 90 degrees, hit enter. And now I have um, sketches all over the place. We can move these around if you want still but it's still manageable, I think. So I'll hit stop sketch, because that's really all we need. All we need is those couple of sketches to make our D-pad. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start extruding. So I'll hit E on my keyboard, and then click on these four squares, just to sh sort of show you uh, what happens uh, when, you, when you try to do it to a full uh, uh, solid like this. So I'm gonna put 4.5 for the thickness, and then my sketch disappeared. It's still there, I just hit it, because it likes to do that, which is fine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the uh, the draft. So under modify, we'll click on draft. And the first thing you need to do, the first thing I expect is, oh, I want to draft this one, right? And now it's like, well, select a uh, a face. Select select. I click my plane, which was this first thing. And I'm going to click on a face. So I don't know, maybe this one. So watch what happens now. It's actually doing the face and not the plane. So you got to make sure that you you do it backwards, right? Or at least to, to me, it feels backwards. So I'm going to click on modify, click on draft. And I'm going to click on this one first, and then this one. And now you can see 
that it's moving the whole thing because this is a full surface. So it only does a surf surface. So if we wanted to do the up, right, left, and down, up, left, down, right, <laughs> we need to do it a little bit uh, differently. So we can't do it all as one. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that extrude and then hold down command and then and I'm gonna deselect all of these and just have one square. So I'm gonna start off with the left. So I'll hit okay. So now we have that extruded. So now I'll bring back the sketch just so I can reference it. So that's the left key, right? The left D-pad. So I'm gonna go back to modify, hit draft, and this time I'm gonna select this as the plane and then this as the face. So now I'm gonna drag this up and just put something like 15 degrees. I think 15 degrees will be fine. So I'll hit okay. So, in, so, that, so there's our first draft, right? So this left key, we did a draft and that's kind of where we want it. Now, instead of having to do each one individually, I can just do a mirror of this guy. So I'm gonna to go to create, go down to mirror, and then click on, uh, change the pattern type to this one for bodies, and I'll click our body. And now I'll, I'll select uh, the mirror plane part. And then nicely, the origins popped up, so I can click on any of these faces, any of these planes rather, origins, and I'll click on that one, and then that will mirror it on that plane. So now I get a little ghost preview, and that's exactly where we want it. Everything's symmetrical because we started everything in the center. So I'll hit OK. So now I have two of them. Yay. And so the next thing I need to do is, is to extrude just one of these guys out. So I'll extrude this out. It was 4.5. Now 44, 4.5. And then I'll need to make sure that the operation is set to new body. If we make new, if we make it join, it'll actually join it to this, and then we won't be able to do that that draft the way we want. So make sure it's a new body, hit OK. Now it's its own body. If we drop this down and we have all these individual uh, bodies and we'll group them later. But now I can go um, back up to modify, draft, and then I'll click on that, click on that, and then just move it up by 15 degrees, hit OK. And then we can do the same thing. We can do another mirror, make sure the pattern is set to body, the pattern type. And then I'll select my mirror plane. This time it's gonna be this one here. And then it gives me that ghost that looks about right and hit OK. And now we have our, our sort of up, right, down, left, right thing. <laughs> so now all I need to do is uh, sort of extrude this guy out. So I click on that, hit E on my keyboard, and I'll punch in um, 4.5. Let me select it from over here, 4.5. Hit OK. And by doing that, it actually joined everything together. So now we have one body. So instead of having to combine everything, uh, the center one just bring it all together because the operation is its join, so that's cool. So now we have our, our D-pad minus the base. We'll do the base at the very end, but the next thing I want to do, I'm going to hide the sketch. Next thing I want to do is I want to apply a fillet to this whole thing here. So we need to just select all of these edges, and there's a lot of edges to select. So instead of um, selecting all one by one, I'm going to click on select, and then make sure that select through is, is, is selected on. So make sure that's turned on. And now I'm going to click on the fillet uh, tool. I'm going to click on the front and then I'm just going to click from here down like that to select all of this, all of the edges that we want. We don't need this, we don't need to make any of this bottom because this is actually going to be tied to the um, to the base so we don't need to select those. So now I'm just going to type in one and it'll do a fillet to all of them. Um, you have a couple options here for the corner type. This one here called uh, setback makes it a little bit more more roundy um, but I'm going to click on rolling ball just so that it's not so extreme, but it's up to you to, to do however you want. So I'll click OK, and now I'll bring back our sketch. I'll hide the body. I'll hit E on my keyboard and just select a marquee selection, all that. And I'm going to put negative 1.5 for the base. Make sure to bring back the body so that it joins, so the operation is now to join. I'll click OK, and now we can hide our sketch. Now we have one body. We can print this out if we want, but if you want to take it a step further, let's say you wanted to add like some arrow, um, arrow, uh, I don't know what you call it, cutout, little arrow cutout. Uh, we can do that really easy. I'll click on the line tool and then select the surface that we want. So I'll click on that one. It'll it'll move everything nicely to it. So I'll just start clicking over here. Oop, let me do that again. I want everything to be on the grid. So I like how everything snaps, right? So click on that over here, something like that. Close it. I want it to be perfect, like that. <laughs> I'll hit stop sketch. I'll hit extrude, and then I can extrude it by like half of a millimeter. 0.5 looks good, hit OK. And then we can do that to all of these now if we want. Um, to do the little center part, that little center piece here, 
All I did was I made a sphere and I squished it down and just subtracted from that. So it's up to you how much detail you want to get to it. Obviously you want to print this out in a little bit more resolution instead of like 200 microns, maybe like 100 microns or 150. It's up to you, but that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys with a couple operations that we did here, uh, drafting and mirroring to make things a little bit more easier. Um, it's a little bit different than one, two, three D how I did with the original pocket pie girl. Um, but that's pretty much it. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please leave them down below. I love your guys comments. They're always really nice. Um, but until next time, guys, remember to keep on a cat. Bye guys.